Welcome to this uh, Exchange for Media Presence Reboot Mantra, which is powered by Media Mantra. Uh, we are going to discuss uh, the topic is technology trends transforming the workspace in 2020. And uh, for this panel, I have uh, with me Nikhil Joshi, co-founder Digital Jalebi. I have uh, Teja Gudluru, uh, founder Yudu, Vasudev uh, Jagar Lamuti. Uh, he is uh, head of online sales Telugu. I have uh, with me Ram Male. He is uh, CEO Web Webconf Meetings and Sonics Consulting. Uh, we have Kiran Dam, CEO Globus Infocom, uh, and Mr. Udit Patak, the man behind uh, this uh, entire concept. And Hi. thanks, Karan. Uh, thanks uh, for the introduction, and 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 the thanks to uh, all the E4M team members who are there supporting us. We are live on Facebook. We will be taking questions later on. We expect audience questions. So before uh, uh, this, uh, I just want to begin. Uh, I this is a generic question just to set the tone of this conversation. Uh, let me start um, with the proverbial uh, ladies first, Kiran, with you. Uh, tell me. Uh, what has what has been the learning of uh, COVID nineteen? Uh, what are the challenges that you faced? I just want to understand it. Okay, uh, a very good afternoon to all of you, and thank you, Rohail, for the introduction. I hope you all are safe and doing well. And Absolutely, I'm getting used to work from home. I think we have to be dragged to office next time. Yeah. <laughs> so let's accept that, and it's it's become a norm now. So the pandemic has taught us, it's, it's been a, quite a learning one actually. And uh, a lot of challenges faced and, uh, you know, though it was the challenges were there, but, you know, I as a person and representing an organization took everything in, a, in the positive spirit and right. worked more on plannings and trainings because right. we are in the edtech ed we are a edtech brand and we are a make in india brand and we are, have you know designed and developed innovative solutions for the edtech uh, vertical and the other verticals as well but yes mm -hmm. that was the time when we self introspected and right. went deep into the plannings we went more on product developments and we strategized ourselves and channelized ourselves this is the right. learning which we have took from you know pandemic and we took in the right spirit we launched a new vertical you know right. last week only we've launched a new vertical which is the healthcare and wellness looking at mm. the current scenario the covid times and the products catering to that so that right. was a learning one and we took in the right spirit right i think uh, i think a lot of people have uh, kind of innovated and uh, introduced new things to suit the market yes. uh, sentiment yes. of yes. course nikhil uh, I know Digital Jalebi is doing a lot of innovative work. In fact, if I was looking at one of your uh, presentations that you made for one of the big person clients that is there, tell me what has been the challenge uh, for you especially and how have think, you looked at this space? I think the biggest challenge for uh, companies like us who were in uh, services model, we were meant to reinvent the entire thing. And the, the orientation and the way we were approaching our business completely changed because uh, working in physical spaces, uh, working on custom service driven projects, that's something that was not there for the last couple of months, four months, right. hardly there were any projects. And this gave us an opportunity to see whether our team can come up with ideas, completely reinvent our business. Do we have potential to transform ourselves from services? two products, approach the market in a completely new fashion, introduce the market to a new product segment, which never existed, uh, like right. virtual events, uh, like uh, bringing retail stores to web, experiential retail stores. So it's an opportunity for us and we were able to pull it off. And it's a huge, op it became a huge opportunity for even marketeers and clients to uh, completely uh, reimagine how, how powerful web is overall right. and how people sitting at their households just using basic hardware like entry level mobile phones could still be a participant of uh, of uh, going to a retail store uh, becoming part of a virtual event and interacting and investing into their product or the brand so right. very very interesting times for us uh, primarily for me uh, when i look at eight years of running digital jalebi and then last four months of transforming it completely all the hard work has come to this, yeah. right, actually, everybody is, is migrating to digital. Yeah. 
All right. Um, I just want to make this announcement, then uh, people can, you know, watch your know, viewers can uh, tweet using hashtag E4M webinar, and we will take live questions also later on. I want to come to you, Ram, uh, with your uh, understanding of the last uh, 100 plus days. What have been the learnings and challenges for you? Uh, thanks, uh, Thanks for inviting me. Uh, basically, uh, Last seven years, it's completely a different roadmap. Uh, last four months is a different roadmap. Right. So what uh, it's like the world has changed completely, like uh, before COVID, after COVID, like that. So we could uh, we look at what we were doing, and these four months gave us a good opportunity to uh, look at what innovations we are doing and what can be improved. Like that. And right. one of the initiations what we have done is. Uh, Online recruitment is like uh, using webcam meetings and uh, mm -hmm. events and webinars like that. Right. So we are planning to launch the product webcam meetings. Right now, it's in the beta testing mode. So right, right. Uh, we had uh, e-commerce platform earlier. Uh, right. so as you know, everyone started shifting towards the digitalization. So we have converted this platform as a e-commerce as a service platform. Earlier, we mm -hmm. sell this as a product or a service, like just like any other product. Now, right. we shifted the direction so that uh, customers can also adapt uh, at a cheaper price and flexibility will also come. Right, right, right. Uh, Mr. Vasudev, uh, your Hi. thoughts? Thank you for your introductions. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, as you know, uh, Telugu, uh, we have some, I keep telling everyone, we are. I think one of the very fortunate sort of companies, uh, which is um, you know been in this uh, stuck in this COVID uh, situation positively. When I say that uh, the kind of business we are in, we build uh, remote communication and collaboration tools. And as a business, even though we've seen a large increase in the subscription for many of our services, uh, one of the biggest sort of challenges has been is to deal with some of our existing customers. You know, um, some of our customers in the education space. Um, in the banking financial services, a lot of them, um, you know, took a big hit. And I think that impact is also sort of showing right now. Uh, and as our work has increased, I think uh, one of the uh, key uh, sort of things we've seen is we start to work a lot harder, right? A lot more hours. And um, as a result, I think a couple of months in, uh, most of us started getting burnt out. Like one day, I just like put my, you know, my, I just shut it like out of, nowhere and i was like i'm gonna take a two hour nap a, a, a colleague of mine called and like hey we had a meeting i was like you know what no more meetings for the day i'm done and, and from there to you know right now seeing colleagues sort of uh, call like three four days in just to take a break from things i think that has been one of the biggest challenges um, having you know all this additional work come in we used to be a five day uh, work company but we started putting in a six day to sort of pick up uh, you know, uh, yeah. all the extra additional service that we need to give our customers and so on. So I guess on that front, definitely things have changed. But now um, we're totally starting to get uh, used to this idea. We started to take more breaks. We are working, you know, different work hours. Earlier it used to be like a fixed sort of time. But now we're trying to work in our own times. Um, what else? Yeah, I think right. digital sales has picked up for sure. I think we're picking up on channels like LinkedIn and Instagram as a B2B company to be there. Uh, earlier, we never dreamt of it, but now we're exploring uh, a lot of digital channels to sort of make our presence and stuff. Right, so, right. Sure, sure. Perfect. Uh, um, Mr. Tejo, I want to come to you um, with your thoughts on uh, what has been your observation of the last 100 plus days. Uh, I think, uh, I don't know if it is a, a pattern with Hyderabad startups. Uh, I, I would like to second what uh, Vasu said. I think uh, we are placed in a, a, a brilliant position right now. While it is unfortunate that the pandemic has happened. Uh, I think uh, we've been around uh, in the business for about a couple of years as uh, one of India's first expert advice freelancing kind of an app. Uh, and I think the last 100 days has, has seen a surge in number of people wanting to freelance. Uh, I think there is a general uh, uh, environment out there which is of anxiousness and anxiety about either the fear of losing a job or wanting to have uh, create passive income sources for for oneself. 
uh, we've also introduced, I mean, going with the flow and the requirement of the market, we've also introduced uh, video conferencing and, and, and uh, a lot of other facilities as well. Uh, our larger vision always has been to, to provide Indian resources. Uh, by the way, about 30% of the world's freelance resources come from India. So we wanted to create a platform where the gig economy of India is showcased to the rest of the world. There are already some competitions that we have, but we kind of uh, looked at an audio video consulting uh, where uh, freelancers can actually charge for their services right within the app rather than chasing uh, through other sources. Uh, and the last 100 days, we've seen a surge in the amount of people wanting to consult, wanting to freelance. Uh, uh, so it, there couldn't be a better time for us uh, at this point of time. And we already have more than 3,000 uh, fully qualified experts in about 13 verticals. Uh, who use that. And uh, right. just like some of our uh, big wigs in Indian uh, uh, company uh, diaspora, uh, we are one of the uh, only startups in India that is not funded yet. We are bootstrapped completely. And we are also competing with some of the big heads by giving away free video conferencing solutions uh, as well. Yeah. So, so great. Really great. Absolutely. Odita, coming to you, Odita is also my co-moderator, by the way, he is going to ask questions as well. But before that, I want to understand from you. So you have a very unique perspective. You understand the space, what they're coming from, and yet you have an outside of you. What have you been observing in this landscape of businesses adjusting to this new normal? And as, as Mr. Teja said, you know, uh, freelancers become the norm. I mean, how are you, how have you seen it developing? So, um, first of all, Rohil, everybody has to believe that nobody was ready for this pandemic at all, right? Uh, none was, no, no brand, no agency, no PR firms were ready for it. You know, right. uh, so, as quickly as one could have adopted, everybody did, uh, has done that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I, will, I will take this in two parts. I would uh, brief as an entrepreneur. Uh, because I'm sitting with a lot of uh, entrepreneurs here. So, you know, uh, first thing which, which has changed for every, every office or every, uh, you know, workspace is that how mm -hmm. could we uh, from a physical office turn into a virtual space, which right. probably 100 right. days back, if you would have asked me this question, I would have said, hang on, we can never do that because there are clients demand which keeps coming in and we have to sit, discuss, strategize for clients. So we cannot do that. Uh, right. Uh, but now we, we believe and now since, you know, uh, uh, we, we got in the technology as well in the workspace and we have got quantifiable data wherein which says that, you know, the productivity of employees have increased. It has not dipped ever since the, mm -hmm. in the past hundred days. And that is, that has mm -hmm. definitely been, uh, been a, uh, a, what do you call as a change for us as well and our thinking as well. So, you know, right. that, that has happened. The second uh, is, you know, how as a firm we changed our business model because we are also a service firm, right? Uh, yes. How, uh, which all businesses were we focusing on? Luckily for us, we have always been working with a lot of B2B startups. We have always been working with a lot of growing firms, right? Uh, and we, and luckily we also have been working with firms who, uh, startups or clients who believe that communication is important tool for them. Right. Uh, so today also, you know, whether it's a pandemic, whether it's not a pandemic, uh, you know, if, if uh, the offices is going on, if the clients are working, they have to communicate, right? They have to communicate to, your, to their target audience. And how will they do that? They will do that via, uh, commun uh, via PR firms or via going to digital, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, uh, digital audiences or something like that, right? So... Uh, mm -hmm. I think uh, we have we have adopted pretty quickly. Uh, we we you know we have been working with a lot of brands who are growing. Uh, we mm -hmm. are trying to uh, encash the opportunity in a lot of uh, these video conferences applications and also looking at working with a lot of gaming platforms as well because I believe right. there's a lot of scope there. So I think uh, uh, what needs to be happen uh, what needs to uh, happen is you know we need to strategize and change our business model. We can't work as a traditional business. We can't think that, okay, our retail FMCG client would come in and give us higher retainers. No, we have to be innovative in our business model and think of businesses which are growing and, you know, think of businesses whom which we can partner with. So we have right. done that. And touch wood, we are also in a position wherein uh, I think, uh, yes, there have been few changes as our restructuring, which has happened, but Yes, we are seeing that, you know, brands are very uh, matured and they are communicating with their target audience. They understand the need of communication. And uh, I'm uh, pretty happy to see that brands are uh, understanding it. We don't have to go and make them understand today. Right. So this, before you don the uh, 
the moderator a cap. I just want to go a quick round of uh, question, my second question. But I want to request everyone to stick to like one minute to it so that we have a lot of questions, follow up questions. One is I want to start with you again, uh, Nikhil. Uh, yeah. uh, tell me, uh, what are some of the opportunities you said that, you know, you, this has kind of been a moment where digital players, I think, they were not waiting, but it just happened and they're yeah. cashing on it. So how exactly are you cashing on this moment? And also, when you look at the tools and technologies uh, as far as enterprise communication is concerned, yeah. has it, uh, how has it kind of evolved in the last uh, three months plus? So uh, the best part about what has happened, so uh, pandemic is very bad and all of what has happened is very unexpected. But the best part about it, it has prepared audiences, it has prepared marketers, it has prepared clients to quickly jump onto the digital. And they are more than ever prepared to invest into digital, experiment with new things. That's, that's the biggest opportunity that we see. What we are doing is trying to bring new ideas, develop new concepts, uh, like bringing a retail store to digital, uh, making a entire virtual walkthrough or a seminar that used to generally happen, physical seminars that used to. So there's so many uh, briefs that are lying around, which were requirements for physical spaces, never thought to be for digital. Now clients are ready to pick it up in digital. If we are able to conceptualize, uh, bring them a POC, do something for them. So that that has been a big opportunity. Uh, when we talk about enterprise communication, I think there there was this always a question of the learning curve. People were uh, in India generally when we used to uh, uh, work, people would always want for an important meeting. They would always want you to be there physically to be there. I have several times traveled to Mumbai, Bangalore, and uh, where not just for uh, an hour long meeting because yeah. the key guy wants to meet you, but that has completely changed. Now the absorption rate, the trust while I and you are sitting here and talking to each other has built up. This wouldn't have happened without the pandemic in the seat. So I think enterprise communication was always there, but the big push is coming right now where the trust as well as the idea of, uh, of, uh, not shying away from the learning curve is there. People are picking up new apps every day. People question Zoom and then question uh, Google Meet and they say we need a better app and they're ready to jump onto a new app and then learn the interface. That was not there. People were just looking for very, very, uh, they, they always wanted to people either be physically there or or just give them a call. So I think it, it, it is a very, very interesting uh, scenario for uh, both creators, developers, uh, people who are uh, entrepreneurs as well as clients, both are very, very, uh, both are ready to jump into this together and innovate, quickly innovate and build new opportunities for the market. Kiran, what have uh, been the opportunities for you uh, that have been you know, created in the last hundred days? And also the shift in uh, enterprise communication, the tools that we are having you know, around, how do you see them? Have they changed? How have they shaped up? You can just tell us. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Sorry. The question. You want to add something, Nikhil? You want to add something? No, 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 no. Okay, okay, okay. I, yeah, yeah. Go on, Kiran. Okay. Okay. So the first and foremost thing is that uh, the pandemic has taught each one of us, whether we being the providers or the users, the consumers, to be agile and ad adaptable. That's the major change which has happened, and beautiful imbibition of technology in their day to day business meetings or conferences. Now, earlier what used to happen was that, you know, as Nikhil rightly said, that we had to travel for one meeting to meet the key guy. That was there. That was in our minds. We, we were working like that. We were tuned like that. But now the transition is beautiful. Everybody has accepted it. And people have shifted and try, try to, you know, they are trying to inculcate that sense that, it's, it can't be equal to a physical meeting, but yes, neck to neck to a physical meeting, which has now become virtual. This is the new yeah. norm. So that's why we also tweaked our business model. We went on a lot of developments on the online sales model, online learning tools, video conferencing solutions, which is software based. So everything is shifting to contactless, which is the need of the art. So that's why we are working a lot on making the solutions, you know, just accessible to the users so that the whole uh, businesses, they come back to the normal. And this is the only way we can come back to normal through technology. 
that is the need of the hour so a lot of video conferencing solutions lot of online learning solutions so that the learner the student and the teacher can access knowledge can deliver knowledge in one go and it it it, it the, the delivery of knowledge should not stop now schools are taking online classes through these virtual solutions available and we now being a make in india brand are coming up with the most affordable solutions which is the need of the hour so that every indian citizen every indian student or a teacher can use them effectively that's the whole idea behind it right uh, ram i want to understand uh, from you uh, how effective have these enterprise tool, tools been in the last uh, 100 ways of course you know i mean as nikhil also said that you know there's a certain kind of credibility to it it was there before but we never we just will fly down to the other city just to be there for one hour what has i mean uh, behavioral change you know what has been the behavioral change in use in the use of these tools according to you yeah so generally we have a saying like uh, any change we do right it can be for a good reason or it can break our to something so mm-hmm. the, what happened the change was not intentional it was forceful so people mm-hmm. have to, uh, not left with uh, much of the choice so what has happened is uh, all manufacturing industries okay all automotive industries or in healthcare or any, any other major the way they were operating sometimes they were adopted to the enterprise practices from so long that it takes lot of time to transform themselves now it could right. be an opportunity for them to relook at the way they were operationally it's right. definitely one of the i'll not say pandemic is good but the transformation the enterprises have adopted is always a positive side to consider so people right. are responding positively even a lot of customers where we are working earlier they were like thinking in the olden generation days like we need to call the customer support and get the issues resolved now it's all more like a next generation where you are using chatbots more effectively and now if you see more or less like internet companies also like right. fiber and few other stuff uh, mm-hmm. they go to whatsapp based uh, service request like that so everyone will slowly transform use this uh, uh, enterprise companies will start using the technology in a better way i think right so what's the uh, so how 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 are these uh, technology is making a seamless experience between the client and the customers you know how, how is it happening you know i mean for, for the business and the clients and and in turn and directly with the customers yeah i can give you an example of a business that has never actually we never fathomed that they would use technology to reach out to their customers so i speak of agrotech companies and chemical fertilizer companies and they are actually reaching out to farmers digitally you know via an audio conference or a video conference if they have the bandwidth so uh, this is unheard of right i mean earlier they used to have farmer meets and you know it was very physical in person sort of a thing but now given the sort of importance farmers play in our you know uh, ecosystem in the food production uh, supply chain all these companies have decided that uh to bring farmers uh you know to sort of bring their products to farmers they started to educate them using some of these remote uh, conferencing tools and collaboration tools and this is something uh, we see will be here to stay because suddenly a lot of these traditional companies have started like some of these guys were saying to adopt even the mindsets have changed all of a sudden right it thing so they are considering expanding their boundaries probably moving to markets that they never imagined they could reach out to because digital is so powerful so yeah right teja uh, do you do you agree how much do you agree with what people have said before you i of all the people that have spoken i think i will echo what nikhil and kiran said and i think uh one of the biggest challenges for startups especially that have moved out of the the paradigm and trying to do something differently is we have to spend so much money energy and effort to educate the market in terms of mm-hmm. why they should stop using traditional methods and adapt to easier ways perhaps and perhaps even cheaper ways of reaching out to consumers or or various communication tools right the pandemic has made it easy for us i think consumer behavior overall i think there is a sense of that education in the market because of a dire need right now that perhaps 
uh, these startups can help us. And the other key thing, and I think I don't think this is specific to India, but generally, uh, consumers tend to trust bigger companies easily, even though it is per- perhaps not a right solution for them. Uh, I think Nikhil mentioned Zoom or even GeoMeet or or some of the other tools. They're only an enhancing uh, software. They are not right. a business solution, right? Uh, uh, but still, they would prefer that rather than supporting a startup because of the consumer behavior. And we slowly already see that changing. Uh, and consumers are more than happy to try out cheaper but more innovative uh, products that are originating from India. I like the fact that Kiran uh, at least a couple of times mentioned Make in India. And I think that's also very important. Uh, 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 and that's a culture that's, I think, getting picked up as a consumer behavior right now in the market. Uh, Udit, uh, your words finally, since you are a thought leader in this domain and you have seen the communication before, there was enterprise, uh, you know, there were tools around it, but now I think it, the scenario is different. What exactly is that scenario? I just want to understand. So I think uh, things have changed and they have changed drastically. Uh, look at what we are doing right now. We are virtually connected and we are connected with almost what, 100 odd people discussing right. something which is the need of the earth. Right. This, has, this, has, this could have only happened uh, because of this pandemic and because we are in this situation, because we all, somebody is joining from Hyderabad and somebody is from Noida, etc. Right? Right. Right. So this has changed. Uh, so has our industry and communication also changed. Right? Mm. Uh, I have seen the, what social media has done today is, 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 is you know, uh, or online media has done today. You know, we could have thought probably this would happen after three years, right? We have done that in the past hundred odd days, you know, connecting yes. with each other. We are connecting nonstop with our teams on a regular basis, at least four or five times in a day uh, and talking to them, which we would have right. not done that usually. I personally, as an entrepreneur or as a leader of a firm, have connected with people whom I would have never connected during my daytime, right? Uh, you know, I've connected with account executives who are at a junior level, which, which, who are doing phenomenal work, right? Uh, but I've realized what potential they have today. And I'm making sure that they come out and perform more. This could have only right. happened during this time. Otherwise, I could have gone to meet Teja in Hyderabad, gone to meet Kiran mm-hmm. in Noida, and probably pitch them to get, uh, you know, get a business, right? But now I can pitch virtually at what uh, Nikhil or uh, Kiran said and Teja as well, right? I can pitch them virtually and get businesses. So I think uh, this has this has taught, and there are a lot of industries which are giving, right? especially looking at make in India, right? Especially if after, even though the, the disease is still there, even though the numbers mm-hmm. are increasing, I can see uh, people being optimistic. I can see right. people having some kind of positivity and saying that, okay, the businesses are going on. And you know, what, is, what has happened and what has changed is businesses have started trusting businesses together. They are supporting right. them. You know, I remember when uh, lockdown happened, a lot of queries came into us stating that, you know, we might want to hold the communication. We might have to hold this. We might have to. But then, you know, they themselves came back and realized that, okay, no, this is an important thing. We can't stop communicating until unless you are in a, uh, uh, you know, industry like what, uh, what probably travel is right now. Right. The right. entire industry is gone. If that is gone, you don't have to communicate. Right? Now you have got, you have got different industries. Gaming is booming. Uh, video conferencing is booming. There are other innovative, uh, you know, applications which are getting launched. Make in India is happening. Look at us. We were not even manufacturing one PPE kit. We have started manufacturing so many. So there is a, there is a lot of opportunity. We all have to be optimistic. And I think uh, uh, entrepreneurs yeah. like, uh, you know, uh, have, have started being optimistic and trusting each other and definitely uh, looking forward to, I know this is a tough phase, but then we, we all have to live with it for at least for next one year. That is what I feel. Uh, right. Yes. Yeah. Right. No, totally, totally. I think uh, that efficiency, I mean, that has been part of this in the last hundred days. I mean, without traveling and we get equal, the same kind of results. Also in my conversation with one of the marketing experts, they said that people will only remember those brands that have communicated during these tough times. And those brands that have been silent during this time, they have to face the, the other side of it, you know post-pandemic. Anyway, I let Udit take the moderator, uh, co-moderator chair for some time now. Yes, please, you can go ahead. But don't ask me the question, of course. <laughs> Just yeah, yeah. Yes. So again, uh, you know, my question is to uh, everyone. Uh, let us start with Kiran. Uh, you know, the question is, you know, looking at the current study uh, and look, you know, you were just talking about making India as well. Do you see uh, uh, there is a scalability which can happen 
during this time the, uh, as 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 businesses as your business right do you think that you can scale right now or totally as a business as a whole how do you feel that industry will move now especially when you are into ed tech you are somehow connected with other platforms as well right so how do you think the industry would move yes i strongly feel that scalability will happen and we are doing scalability in our organization because we can see that the demand is encouraging for these online learning solutions for healthcare and wellness products people are going to go in for these solutions now healthcare and wellness this is the dire need during this pandemic uh, somebody has to go in for a thermal cctv camera or a sanitizer which is contactless at the entry of the premises because yeah. though we are following a work from home culture but gradually that also is unlocking we are you know we ourselves as an organization are doing rosters now we are calling alternate days you know we have started that to call people on alternate days so we are now gradually unlocking ourselves so these solutions are there work from home culture is imbibed it will be there for i think i can't comment on that but yes for a certain amount of time till the time we don't have a vaccine so yes we can see that demand coming we it is encouraging that the need for a video conferencing solution or an online learning solution is there so scalability is happening as far as both these verticals are concerned and we would do our bit accordingly okay thank you uh, teja what do you think about it uh, uh, i think like i said you know i think uh, Uh, one uh, there's a famous saying that most uh, uh, people use when uh, which is against either bad movies or bad products being bought which is when the buying stops the selling stop stops too i think now the buying has started for a lot of things online uh, which means there is obviously uh, a lot of opportunity for uh, indian companies to to scale up and i think overall uh, some of the initiatives taken up by the government are helping Uh, uh people to now look at either by force or by opportunity to look at indian products uh which is a great sign i think uh, for all of us uh so yeah from that perspective i totally second uh, uh, what uh, the other speakers have been saying here mr ram yeah definitely there is lot of uh, scalability options are available uh even uh, the way we are operating also we are seeing uh, it's just a matter of uh, adoption how we are, are doing the sales earlier how we are doing the scalability we just have to restructure the operations that's it so okay vasudev okay. uh, i should ask me from a scale point of view i think in this kind of an economy where everything is down and we're all looking at growth i think talent plays a key role and uh, given the pandemic uh, earlier you were sort of restricted to a single city or a location where you were but now uh, you have a larger talent pool to choose from uh, possibly all over india even globally so i think from that point of view uh, yeah uh, we are well positioned to scale yes right nikhil your thoughts on this yeah i would just want to add what vasudev said uh, earlier when we used to hire people scaling obviously is happening with all these opportunities we were always tried to the geographical idea of hiring people in bangalore for delhi offices for mumbai offices but now with the idea of everybody sitting at their home just using a laptop to work we can hire uh, a talent across the world and that that's something that has changed in us also and that is giving given us a lot of opportunities we are hiring amazing talent from across the world and they are interestingly they are also delivering across the world so for a company like us we are not now bound to geographical boundary of india where we were just giving our services to a northern india region or southern india region we are getting projects all across the world like brazil and co- countries in africa we haven't heard from so very very interesting uh, times and yes uh, scale scalability is happening and uh, interesting patterns we we seeing very interesting patterns also and um, just another one uh, so again in the same order you know yeah. so kiran uh, uh, how do you think that the customers attitude has changed in the past 100 days do you think that uh, i i know uh, when i was going through your website and i i remember that you're working with a lot of government clients also government projects as well if you are you know do you think that there has been some kind of change because you know government usually works in a traditional manner do you think there is a shift which has taken place um, if you could just throw some light on that it's a generation shift it's not a normal shift it's a yeah. generation shift 
yeah. in the minds of the consumers and as far as the government fraternity is concerned very encouraging i must compliment you know the government fraternity on that because they have moved on from that mindset of having a traditional classroom to now having a digital classroom which is fully equipped whether it is the content whether it is enhancing on the linguistic skills now they are focusing a lot on going in for implementation of digital labs in the schools in which we are giving them the uh, k12 content and the english hindi sanskrit language contents to enhance the skills of these students whether it and it is for the government schools only so it's yeah. a generation shift in the minds of the consumers and it is pretty encouraging and it, i should compliment them on that whether it is government or corporate schools or you know shifting from a traditional classroom to an online classroom though we are not replacing teachers yeah. we are just making technology enable them to deliver knowledge effectively that's the whole motto all right yeah. okay teja what 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 has been your case in terms of the customers and consumer shift i think for a long long time odit uh, companies have preferred uh, the large brands uh, you know i can now see the shift even with my corporate clients where uh, people who preferred uh, spending a million dollars for a for a product that probably originated from outside of india just because uh, they said well you know what we are we don't have a choice you know the indian products don't have the quality which means they never even bother to explore some of the indian alternatives that were there always now they're spoiled for choice because now that i think uh, uh, they've started realizing that hang on we don't have to spend a million probably for less than quarter of a cost of that we are probably getting a lot more features uh, yeah. we being ripped off so as companies look to reduce their overheads and become lean and mean uh, because businesses have been impacted as well yeah. i think the focus has moved to looking for a solution centric partnership rather than a cost centric partnership because i think with indian startups bouncing onto the plethora of platforms right now i think they're spoiled for choice uh, and now the focus is more on who gives us the best features rather than who is just copying what the international market uh, is talking about and i think indians were always ahead in terms of bringing out brilliant solutions unfortunately previously we had to move out of india to kind of become successful i am now seeing a trend like what uh, nikhil was saying where the world's now coming to us because uh, whether it is talent skill resources or costs there are very few countries in the world that can match what we can provide for our clients so from that perspective i think it's a brilliant transition a generation like what kiran said yeah yeah nikhil your your take yeah i would uh, want to add something what teja uh, said so it's also because what's happening this shift is also happening because people have started critically looking at things uh, before the pandemic they were just looking at the packaging and looking at something coming from silicon valley and not noida or not bangalore but now they are since they are using these tools these tools are their only way to connect to the outside world they understand what a feature really means what a bandwidth means in a video calling service what a call how to judge the quality and once they get into the critique they they can value and understand and can look at a product whether it is indian or a silicon valley company that hardly uh, matters uh, what has happened in my industry also i come from the new media industry which is largely uh, ar vr fancier technologies these were very fancy technologies these were not meant for day to day client these were mo- not meant for uh, uh, like a proper conference or a meeting uh, happening in a large organization these were just meant for events and do quirky stuff now this pandemic has given people an opportunity to try out more immersive tech because they want to enhance their experience of talking to someone like becoming uh, holoportation there are very very fancy concepts of getting holoported be becoming a hologram you looking at someone so all all of you who are speaking to me right now could be just sitting in my room so these technologies and these concepts were there but now people are ready to invest experiment with these products and they are coming to real life that that has been a huge shift this would have taken many years uh, like uh, someone rightly said this would have taken i think you were telling 3 uh, 4 5 years this, this could have taken 5 years for us to achieve but now it's happening in 5 months yeah yeah that's right vasudev your take on this you are on mute no i said uh, from a shift in consumer mindset i think uh, 
one of the key things is willingness to sort of learn and try new things like how nikhil and you know kiran and them were saying it's yeah. a willingness to actually experiment uh, you know give more uh, chances to the in, in startups try uh, you know alternative products i won't say necessarily cheaper but in some cases obviously they cost conscious but i think uh, that as a whole uh, is great for business earlier communication was around okay you're a brand or you're not you know then if yeah. you're not a brand you're probably selling cheaper but now that uh, people are willing to try i think it'll be an interesting sort of time to you know gain digital sales yeah yeah that's right uh, mr malay your your take yeah yeah there is a interesting conversation happened with one of my client very recently yeah. he was asking a couple of uh, uh, he, we were having some small discussion with uh, cfo ceo and couple of other management team so who will who will actually play a key role in digitalization is generally a cto or a cfo or sometimes management had some pressure like uh, you have to transform because of so and so challenge business challenge like that now who is playing major role here is a uh, covid not like a cfo ct or any other person so what are reason happened but now it's a positive side for most of the companies to uh, have a reason uh, for adoption like earlier what used to happen you will have a lot of reasons not to adapt to the new technologies now it's kind of a new norm where you have it chance to experiment something and then uh, transform the company using the digitalization so i would say everyone has to uh, reinvent or relook at the strategies what they are following so yeah so one last question and then we move to uh, the audience questions because there are few questions which have come in and anyone could any any two three people could answer this uh, you know but what so this is a question related to communication so what do you think has been your communication mantra uh, to to get the uh, business objective solved now this could be anything right uh, so why don't any one of you probably kiran teja nikhil anyone could of uh, can answer this what is your communication mantra and what do you what do you say what what will you uh, talk to young entrepreneurs you know who are just starting especially during this time i know a lot of people who started in january and they had to shut their offices in march so what do you what will you say to them i can i can go first maybe and yeah. and i think you kind of answered that already udit in your intro uh, about how you probably communicating a lot more right now yeah uh, 2020 for most companies uh, is about survival and you just said that right yeah. uh, uh, of course growth there are companies who are still growing in this tough times the communication mantra for me is over communicate of course within the feasible limits but communicate at least twice more if you were only reaching out to your existing customers uh you know make it twice yeah. because uh, as as much as it is important to acquire new clients right now it is also important uh, to keep the clients you already have because they're spoiled for choices right now so mm-hmm. over communicate be in touch with your teams be in touch with your clients at least twice more than and than what you were doing previously uh because there's a lot of noise out there on social media on marketing channels everybody is going digital keep your clients close to you Uh, and then perhaps look at uh, acquiring because it's all about survival this year absolutely i would like to add on on what teja said please communication mantra for us as an organization in this pandemic i would uh, you know like to uh, you know focus on that area that we believe in being supportive first and foremost and be be empathize with the whole ecosystem around us we as an organization you know because there are a lot of insecurities in young minds that, that's why i'm telling this uh, you know point as far as i'm concerned that there are a lot of organizations who have gone in for layoffs for you know pay cuts for restructuring their organization and things like that but we as an organization have not done a single layoff and we have done 100% pay off of salaries during this pandemic which has brought in whether it is for our employees or whether it is with our vendors and the whole ecosystem which we have created around us we have done our bit that has led you know a sense of deep trust towards one and all and we you know now people are saying that it's a dream organization that they would like to work with because we have been supportive we have empathized we have inquired about 
our customers' health, their families' health, our employees' uh, families' health. So we have been supportive throughout, and that has been our mantra throughout this pandemic. Yeah. Yeah, so as long as you are doing external communication, internal also plays an important role. And that is what you have done, Kiran. I think kudos to you. Uh, Nikhil, uh, quickly, yeah, quickly. I think our mantra has been to tell our clients that let's innovate and there's nobody judging. So there were a lot of apprehensions in clients' mind when, when it comes to experimental media, experiential media, what will work, what not will work. Is this a good technology? Will it become too fancy? I think this is the right time for them to open up their uh, gates, invest into experimental, experiential stuff and see because everybody, even the customers who are sitting at their home, they're pretty open to any sort of idea and they would like to interact, uh, take, participate in something which is interesting. So, and that has really picked up. That's, that's the pattern I am also seeing in a lot of our clients who are ready to uh, experiment now. All right. Uh, I just have a, yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, please. Okay, so to add to what Teja said about, you know, a lot of noise being on various marketing channels, I think uh, my communication mantra is, would be is to be authentic, uh, you know, number one. And number two, I think what Kiran has been trying to do with the ecosystem, trying to, you know, be empathetic and sort of be there for her people and her clients. I think one-on-one -on -one relationships are, are critical, whether it's with your employees or customers. And I think focusing on that is very crucial. So there are some questions now. I'll just go to it quickly. So one of the questions that I received on my WhatsApp is, um, you know, a lot of brands have gone silent, you know, thinking that this is cost cut. And a lot of people say that this silence is not the silence that is needed. Uh, this is a question for everyone. I mean, what are your broad thoughts about brands that think that going silent is the cost cut? In fact, you know, how do you see that kind of a cost cut? I think uh, if I can quickly answer, sure. uh, you can't really stop people from spending uh, one way or the other, they will start spending the economy will roll. And I think it will be very short sightedness uh, at the end of a client to look at just a couple of these months and say that they would want to cost cut from a marketing perspective or from an investment perspective. This is the right time for them to invest and build their brand in the minds of their customers use innovative mediums. And uh, just just go about communicating what they uh, feel is right. Choose uh, more efficient. We have so many entrepreneurs here who are uh, offering more efficient, more cost effective solutions. I think this is the time for them to innovate, even from their practice point of view, where their teams don't go about just Googling some of the best brands, but actually finding out good products that really work for them. Right. I'll, I'll just uh, keep it very short, uh, Rohel, on that question uh, with an analogy. Uh, if COVID is like a building that has collapsed and you're stuck under that rubble, don't stay silent because somebody is trying to rescue you. Very well, sir. Very well, sir. Uh, any other thoughts? Uh, Vasudev, you want to add something to it? Yeah, I think I agree with Teja. Um, you know, now's the time to sort of uh, stand up, uh, you know, sort of make your uh, authentic voice heard. Uh, however, uh, that's easier to say than done because, you know, a lot of companies are facing ca crash, uh, you know, cash crunches and they have to sort of figure out where to spend their money. So do I go to a PR agency or do I spend on a direct salesperson? You know, what do I do with my limit? So these are probably important considerations. Right. So there's another thing, Odit, for you, this is for you, this question that expectations uh, uh, that brands, the clients have from agencies have also shifted, you know. In this new environment, uh, what are agencies doing, looking at the way the industry is at the moment, you know? to go that extra mile, is, is anything happening on that front? Is that needed also? Are clients also expecting that from the agencies right now? I think not only clients, everybody will do that, right? Uh, look at your internal teams, they're also expecting much more what you were doing as an employer, right? Kiran right, right. said that, you know, uh, this is the time to empathize, uh, you know, be empathetic towards whether it is your internal stakeholders or whether it is your external stakeholders, right? I think, um, again, innovation is the key. Uh, you know, right. you would want uh, to support clients in whatever ways you could do, uh, right? Right, uh, right? You would want them to come out. Uh, you would want yourself to come out with different ideas and give it, give, uh, give it to them. Because remember, clients, uh, though we have this panel and this panel is uh, doing good for themselves as a business, but there are clients who are not doing well as well, right? Uh, you, we have to remember that they are in a bigger 
problem than what we are today right so we have to stand their entire business model is disrupted we have to stand for them and say that you know we will work with you we understand you guys are going through a tough phase but that's fine i think businesses yeah. as a whole have to support each other today and if we right. do that ecosystem will flow you know what we right. have to think is that we have to support the entire ecosystem and we do that i think uh, we will be able to sail through this so we are right. coming out with different strategies which are solving the business objectives of the clients and brands that's what our aim is right now um, right. whatever right. time it takes we will stand for the clients right. and i think what everybody yeah. has to do that yeah Vasudev, I will come to you because in the last answer, I think there was some audio drop. Please tell me. Uh, yes, you can continue uh, that answer. Plus, you can add to it this what I asked. I mean, are, Wait, are there new expectations? Was... Are there new expectations from the, your agencies, especially the partners and the communication partners? Are there some added expectations that you have? Absolutely, now? absolutely. I think uh, what Udit was trying to say was, you know, uh, earlier it was maybe. um you know getting you know a certain number of publications out or you being branded across some channels was your sort of deliverable but now i think businesses like ours uh, will start looking at impact of actually having had all that presence so we will start to i think work with agencies that will think in our you know sort of long term interest as well and very very result driven i think whereas before uh, you know it is very like i don't know how to put it uh right. <laughs> right but yeah it is just you know uh, taking off some boxes i give you a few you know appearances on these sort of publications and then we'll try and get you some kind of coverage here i don't think uh, that kind of uh, work would sort of go down well with clients i'm talking again about clients like this yeah teja i see you nodding i think you want to add something to it no i completely agree with what uh, vasu was saying and i think uh, it's important and critical at this point of time uh to to validate the expectations and to kind of match up to that as well so definitely the expectations have increased uh a lot of clients don't necessarily understand uh the software development life cycle as well uh so i think it's important for us to to kind of balance it out so i completely second what was also said right so there's one more question uh, i'll come to you ram for this uh, that rebuilding you know so we are we say pre covid post covid but right now this is a rebuilding part i think we are in a rebuilding process right now and in this rebuilding process brands will reposition themselves when you say reposition so that means you are involving experts somewhere the communication the other experts are part of the process tell me in this do you see a greater role for the entire pr space in this rebuilding process that we are witnessing right now yeah definitely like uh, once i mean uh, during this re transition phase i'll say like uh, we we have two options right one is to focus on the actual transition or focus on the uh, communication or any external issues like that so what uh, it gives a couple of chances but what we thought is like uh, uh, you let let's focus on the basic Uh, right and strategy and uh, the progress and the innovation and right sorry sorry i lost your audio yeah uh, nikhil i'll come to you i'll come to you with the same question do you see this rebuilding phase having greater uh, interaction between brands and the pr the interfaces even more than before i think uh, uh, like we need to be empathetic towards our employees clients have become more empathetic towards people and especially uh, their partners they have understood that technology can do wonders uh, for them and even in these time people like us agencies uh, that are uh, supporting them can come up with really innovative ideas to help redefine how their businesses should keep working so uh, i see more uh, cooperation more coordination and more understanding when it comes to client interactions nowadays and the trust is even higher so very interesting very interesting times for us right. kiran your thoughts yeah i agree you know the uh, the relationship between a pr agency or we as an organization obviously we have you know restructured or retweaked our uh, business model and this is what we have communicated and this is what they would communicate and they would you know strategize so it will be hand in hand whatever will happen it will be hand in hand and you know it's not rebuilding a brand i think right. it's uh, 
uh, aligning your brand towards the current scenario so whatever communication is done for a particular brand that has to be in sync with the current times not hyping about it but it has to be exact this is what i would want to say I right. think before I come to you, one more thing. Yes, uh, I just want to uh, say one thing. I think we all need to together create a narrative of positive sentiments. Right? Yes, that is, that is very very important today. Uh, you know, I I know uh, you know people in my office looking up to me and thinking how is the business going. You know, you while you might not give exact numbers to them, but then you have to talk truth to them that okay, this is what is happening in the organization because they are also dependent on us. right similarly at your external stakeholders are as well right so we all have to build positivity yes covid has happened it is going to stay now look at the other options come out with positive sentiments that is what i feel totally yeah right 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 uh was it you want to add to it sorry you might have to repeat your question sure sure so i was talking about this rebuilding process you know the phase that we are in and the relationship between clients and agencies Um, how has that panned out in your view? See, uh, you know, this is new to all of us, right? It's like you know, it's all of us are in a very similar position of uncertainty. We know our businesses, but the environment has changed for everybody, right? So I think it would definitely help to have a partner thinking for you, uh, an outsider with a different perspective, and sort of help you align with your, you know, more uh, sort of recent or more, you know. Uh, more aligned with the recent goals so yes i think it'll be important to have a, a partner think for you as well right right uh as uh, udit has teja said that you know we are in um, it's like uh, the example of that collapsed building and you have to shout uh, and, and do you think uh, you know they have to actually do that shouting to survive or i mean what is it like uh, see trust me Uh, yes, I'm asking Udit. Uh, Udit, sorry. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, Basu, okay. you want to do? Uh, you want to go ahead? Please go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. I think when Teja said shouting, I didn't think. I don't think he literally meant it. But I think definitely uh, trying to stand out. Uh, like I said earlier, uh, trying to bring your authentic voice out. I feel all companies have a unique DNA, and being able to communicate that is very important now than ever. So yes, I think. So I can just quickly come in here. I'm sorry, Odit. Uh, also, it's important that we don't change our vision, focus, and business plan too quickly, just because the market. Uh, uh, and I've seen a lot of my friends who have startups do this uh, to kind of quickly change their vision or their strategy. Uh, I think to also uh, validate that is important. Just wanted to come in and say that. Right. 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 Odit, your thoughts on this? So, by communicating. Uh, doesn't mean that you have to overdo your communication it means uh, you have to do purpose driven communication right you you should know what is your purpose of doing communication right you should know your business objective and i think uh, yes the modes might have changed there might be a change of you know there would be a lot of digital media which which would come in there would be a lot of there would be less of traditional media but then you still have to communicate so i think business models are uh, which were doing fine they have shifted but then they are still communicating so i think purpose driven communication would play a very very vital role and how are firms or agencies able to create an impact and grow together right. with their clients would be the next right. thing which will happen in the industry and uh, that's that's what my thought is right uh i can see we have 1 minute do we have some more time karan or we are over with it uh, because i can just uh, ask maybe a 10 second not 10 second this on a tv so 20 second quick comment you know finally the reboot mantra in 20 seconds you know if i have a call it you know though you have touched upon it in 20 seconds what would be the reboot mantra for brands as far as communication is concerned nikhil uh just work harder be smarter innovate come up with new ideas uh, that's that's the reboot mantra for us for for anyone Kiran, stay positive. <laughs> you very know, important, I think. Very important. Yeah, yes. I believe in that strongly, and the organization ethos is also like that. So stay positive. Everything else will fall in place for you. That's the reboot mantra. Vasudev, I would go back to saying about how we have to all be authentic and focus on scaling what we have with one-on-one -on -one relationships, whether internally or with clients. So yes. 
that ram be the deepak putra i would say stick to the core basics uh, and the strategy what you have been started i mean later on like uh, add ons can change the transition can happen but uh, your core foundation and the basics should not change uh, whether it's e or post for it does but to keep you keep uh, your trust going on and then it should eventually give the uh, right win for you teja okay. your thoughts uh it's it's always uh, sad to be the last one on this because i think i agree with nikhil and kiran <laughs> a lot but i think one more thing i would add to that is to have an absolute sense of gratitude if you still have a business that you're able to run if you still have employees that are passionately working for you if you still have customers who believe in you i think you're in a much better position than most global brands so i think to have that sense of gratitude and be positive i think is is my mantra for for, for now so mantra is also part of the company that you represent too that's so what is that mantra so two things uh, uh, i think innovation is the most important thing and the second is keep learning this mm-hmm. is this is not uh, you know this is the time to unlearn a lot of things which you have done in past and learn mm-hmm. a lot of things which you uh, which you should do and the third important thing would be if you were not multitasking you will not be able to survive today you have Absolutely. to multitask it not only do two things you have to do 100 odd things today uh, you know i see my wife who is also my co-founder managing a house managing the teams mm-hmm. uh, talking uh, to the clients so these are a lot of things which they are doing right we would have not done that she has not done that in the past 8 years uh, yes she right. would sit in the office and come back right but then everybody has to multitask and keep learning newer and newer things absolutely uh, i think our time is uh, we're up by 2 minutes but thank you very much everyone for joining us it's been a great conversation and hopefully maybe we get another chance to have this conversation thank you once again peter thank you all of you thank okay. you so much thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you.